Hi, welcome to Resin Chem Tech. One of my most popular videos has been my motion activated stair lighting, and a lot of you have watched and taken time to leave comments, and I'm extremely grateful for you doing that. But one of the questions I've gotten more than once is Is there a way to create a simpler version of this that doesn't rely on Home Assistant, copying and pasting a bunch of lines of YAML code, and then using ESP Home on separate controllers? For those of you out there asking, I think I might have found a way. So as I mentioned in the opening, my Stairlight video has been one of my most popular, especially for a small startup channel like myself. And again, I appreciate everyone who's watched and taking time to comment. But looking back at it, it is a pretty complex project, especially for someone who's just starting out with, with DIY and home automation. First of all, you have to have Home Assistant or some other similar system. Uh, you need ESP Home. Uh, you need to uh, figure out how to deal with the automations and the YAML files. There are a lot of steps and a lot of processes. So when the question came up about, is it possible to create a more simple version? I stepped back and said, could I look to make something that's self-contained, that doesn't require any outside uh, systems to run, and the only thing that would be needed to set it up is going to be the phone? So I think I've come up with that. But before you watch any further, if you're expecting any kind of special effects, the chase scenes, or any of the things that you get with WLED, you're not going to get this with this project. It basically is going to use one or two different motion detectors to turn on your LED lights and then turn them back off after a time you specify. You'll be able to specify the color and the brightness and the amount of time the lights stay on, but that's going to be pretty much it. So if you still have interest, hang around and I'll get into the details. So here's the controller we're going to use. It is basically identical to the same controller I built for the stairs and for a lot of other LED projects that I've done. It's very simple with a Wemos D1 Mini and a logic level shifter. And I'm not going to go into the details of this because I actually have a separate video that will walk you through step by step on how to build this controller. And you'll see a link appearing right up here that if you're interested in that, I'll also leave a, a link in the video description. Um, to this video and to a blog that has complete wiring diagrams. It's not that complex. The only thing we are going to do different in that video, there was the ability to optionally uh, install a button, a push button. We're not going to do that here. And instead, we're going to add one and optionally a second uh, motion detector. Um, one is required. The second one is completely optional, which you might want to use in the case of something like, like stairs. And again, the wiring diagrams will show you how to connect that, but it's, it's really pretty simple to do. Now, because of this size, it does take a little bit of skill uh, in terms of soldering, but you can move up to a full size node MCU and a little bit bigger board. This will make soldering a little bit easier, but the controller itself is going to be a little bit larger. Again, the uh, link to the blog will have the wiring diagrams for both versions and how to wire uh, the motion detectors. Again, there's one other primary difference between the build your own uh, LED controller and this one is the fact that we're not going to install WLED on our controller. Instead, we're going to install a different version of firmware that I developed uh, for this simplified version. So I will cover how we do that next. Of course, to get the firmware onto your controller, you're going to need a couple of pieces of software. Don't worry, they're free downloads, but the first one is the firmware itself. I will, once again, we'll leave a link down in the video description, but you're going to need to go to my GitHub. Um, and then over here, you're going to look for releases and click on the latest. And you want to download this .bin or bin file. So just click on that to download it. You can save it anywhere you want. I'm going to just going to put it on the desktop. Just remember where you saved it. Okay, we're going to come back and use that in a minute. But you also need software to flash that firmware onto your controller. There are a lot of different versions. Uh, the one I'm going to show is uh, basically the one for a Node MCU Pi Flasher. This one works for, for Windows or Mac. Once again, when you go there, just go to the latest releases and download the appropriate version for your operating system. Again, Windows and Mac. There are other uh, software versions that also support Linux. But again, I'm going to click that and I'm going to save that once again to my desktop. There is no installation of this. It's an EXE file, so you don't have to install it. You can just run it directly. Okay, once we've downloaded both pieces of software, the first thing you want to do is make sure that your uh, 
microcontroller is not plugged into your computer yet. Uh, go ahead and, and double click to launch the Node MCU Pi Flasher. And the first thing you want to do is drop down this box and check for any existing COM ports. In this case, I've got one listed called COM3. And at that point, you can go ahead and plug your micro, microcontroller into your USB port. Okay, your computer will probably ding. And then we want to click this reload button and look for the new COM port that was just added. In this case, it's COM4. That's the one your controller is connected to, and that's the one you want to select. If you don't see a new COM port here, you might try disconnecting your controller, shutting down Node MCU, plugging the controller back in, and relaunching to see. If it still doesn't show up, you may not have the USB to TTL serial drivers, so you may need to go out and get those drivers installed. Once you have the COM port selected, now we're going to browse and select that bin file that we downloaded. It's right here. So that's the bin file. Again, the defaults here, but you want to make sure that you've got uh, 115 200 for your baud rate, dual I.O. set here, and yes, we do want to wipe all the exist pre-existing data off of this. Once that's done, go ahead and click the flash button. Uh, the one thing is this is flashing. It's, it's going to take a couple minutes. You may want to copy down and keep this MAC address. The reason why is, is we're going to need to know eventually what the IP address uh, that our router gives to this device. And having that MAC address can sometimes help with that. Okay, so there we are. Our flashing is done. At this point, we can go ahead and shut this down, and we're ready to use our phone to onboard this to our Wi-Fi. Okay, so once we've got our controller flash, we're going to unplug it and plug it back in again. I'm going to hear the little ding going on. And we're going to watch, and in a second, a new wireless access point should pop up automatically. Okay, and there it is. It'll always be ESP, followed by, uh, I believe it's six characters, which is the last six uh, characters of the MAC address. We're going to tap that to join. Now, you may get a message that there's no internet connectivity, which there won't be, but go ahead and do whatever it, it asks for to stay connected to that access point. I've joined this one so many times, it's probably not going to prompt me. It's not. You may also be prompted to join this network, which you want to go ahead and select yes. Otherwise, if you don't, you're going to open up a browser. And, of course, there's no internet connectivity, so I can't get there. So I actually have this bookmarked. We're going to go to 192.168.4.1. And this is going to be our setup screen. Now, if you hit configure Wi-Fi, it'll scan your local network for all the access points. So we'll go ahead and hit that. This could take anywhere from up to 30 seconds. It's pretty quick. So there are all my available access points. I want to select mine, and then I'm going to type my password, which I'm going to do off screen here. Okay, get back down there and see that again. So I've got my Wi-Fi information entered in. Now it's going to ask me to enter the number of PIRs or the number of motion detectors that I have. I'm going to use two in this case. The number of LEDs in my strip for my little test strip that we're going to be testing with. I, whoops, I only have 20. Oops, that was two on that. LEDs is going to be 20. How long do I want the LEDs to remain on after motion is no longer detected? Um, for the purposes of this, I'm going to make that, make that really short. I'm just going to put in five seconds. How bright do I want the LEDs to be from 0 to 255? I'm going to pick 128 and then the RGB values that I want for my, the color I want my strips to be. Uh, I'm going to make this a cyan color. So we're going to go 0 on red, 255 on green, and 255 on blue. You can come back and change these settings, and I'll talk about that later. But once you have the settings that you want in there, simply click the Save button. It's going to tell you that your credentials were saved. It's going to reboot, and it's going to connect to your Wi-Fi network, and we're now done with the phone. Okay, after I put the firmware on there, I always like to do a bench test before I create the soldered version and test all of my functionality. Now, this looks like an awful lot of octopus of, of wires here, and there are lots, but that's just because we're having to use a lot of alligator clips. But if you follow along with the wiring diagram, it's really pretty simple. We've got 5 volts coming into our controller, 5 volts feeding into the high side of our logic level shifter, 3.3 volts down the other side in the logic level shifter, the LED control signal coming out 
going into the logic level shifter out to our LEDs. And then we've added the two motion detectors, uh, which are connected to pins D5 and D6 and 5 volt and ground. So it is a lot of wires, but it is pretty simple. So I'm going to connect the power supply here. And what we should see is the LED strip is going to flash briefly in blue when the boot process completes. So there it is. So now the boot process is finished and it's ready to go. So let's test our first motion detector. Here we go. Our lights came on and they should stay on for about five seconds after the motion detection resets. And then they should automatically turn themselves off and they did. Let's test the other motion detector. Okay. And then once again, the lights came on. They're going to stay on for about, about two seconds longer than, than what we put in there just because that's how long it takes for the motion detector. But if we turn the lights on here and we keep putting motion back and forth on each side, the lights will stay on until that motion stops. And then five seconds after that, the lights will turn themselves off. So that's the functionality of how this works. Again, you can control the color and the brightness, but you really can't put any kind of special effects onto it, at least at this time. So functionally it's working. So now we could actually move on with creating that controller. Okay, I'm back at the stairs. And what I've done at this point is I've swapped out that original WLED controller that was connected to Home Assistant and required ESP Home and, and all the YAML code for the self-contained version that doesn't require any of that. This is a controller we just configured. So as soon as it detects motion down here, there are lights are gonna come on again in that blue cyan color we set. And after five seconds, they're gonna turn themselves back off. Again, it works the same way with the bottom motion detector as it does at the top, all self-contained, no home automation required. And there's one final thing I wanted to mention. I mentioned needing to know the IP address of the controller. The reason why you would want to know that is once it's installed, you can issue some basic commands uh, via your web browser to basically reboot the controller, uh, reset it to go back in and update the settings, or even to eventually do over-the-air updates if I release uh, additional versions of the firmware with more features. Uh, I may continue to work on this and, and improve some of the features, but I'm not going to try to recreate WLED. That is outstanding software, and, and I would never create anything near that great anyway. But th so there you have it. It's not fancy, doesn't have any uh, fancy effects, and doesn't have a lot of features, but it is a self-contained motion-activated LED uh, light strip controller that doesn't require Home Assistant or any other uh, fancy code or setup process. That's going to do it for this video. If you like this video, please let me and YouTube know by hitting that like button at the bottom of the screen. If you'd like to see more of my videos, please click that subscribe button and to be notified when I release a new video, ding that little bell icon. As always, thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.